Here I am in the USA, Los Angeles, and I am covering the AMD Next Gaming Horizon event. And today they've announced two new graphics cards, and that is the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT. Now spec wise, these are both seven nanometer GPUs and they've got 40 compute units and 36 compute units between the both of them. They also use eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now the die size, especially versus Vega 64 and Vega 56 has been cut down dramatically. Spec wise, I'll pull these specs up for you guys where they also talk about their new RDNA architecture and how it's radically changed versus the GCN architecture. Now, both these graphics cards will be released sometime in July. They haven't given a specific date yet, and as I'm doing this video, they actually haven't given a exact price. Now, that will be later today, I believe, but I will update the description with the pricing for you guys. But on that note, they have poised both these cards, the 5700 and 5700 XT versus the RTX 2060 and RTX 2070. Now, later today, I am told there is a demo that I can go and check out where they're gonna be comparing the RTX 2060 versus the 5700. But with that aside, Microsoft also made a huge announcement with their next upcoming console, which is going to be released in 2020. And they're gonna be using the new Zen 2 CPUs as well as this same architecture that's going into this PC desktop. Now, that was a really cool announcement, but I will say that I thought it wasn't as cool as Keanu Reeves coming out on stage. Now, besides these new GPUs coming to market and bringing some competition, they've also announced some new technologies, one of which is called anti-lag. Now, me being a person who loves a snappy experience, a responsive PC and lowest input lag possible, I'm gonna be checking out this technology and getting to the bottom of it and telling you guys what it's all about. So with that aside, let's get into the video. All right, so what we have is a demo of anti-lag, it's a live demo, and we're showing you that your click to response time with Radeon can be substantially lower than with the competition. So anti-lag is a software optimization. What we're doing is we're making sure that the CPU work where your input is registered doesn't really get too far ahead of the GPU work where you're drawing the frame so that you don't have too much lag between when you click mouse, when you press a key, and when you get the response out on the screen. Right, that's the idea. And what we're showing here is we've got an Arduino-based latency testing setup. This acts as a keyboard and it has a photo sensor on it. And we have a little bit of software that responds to the keyboard input by changing the color of a square that's on the screen that the photo sensor reads. So it's basically looking at the input to response loop. And uh, on the competing card, at about 60 frames per second, we've got an input response loop of about 55 milliseconds. Whereas over here with Radeon Anti-Lag turned on, same basic frame rate, we're at 39 milliseconds uh, of lag. So that's, that's a saving of 15 milliseconds. Almost a full frame at 60 FPS, right? 16.7 milliseconds per frame. So that's basically what anti-lag can get you. There's a whole chain of latency from your mouse to your display, but the bit of it that we can control, we're able to reduce quite a bit with anti-lag. And what if we went up to, say, 200 FPS? Would it, would it come, the difference would come down a little bit? Well, Radiant anti-lag is a GPU uh, limited performance scenario benefit, right? So whenever you have a GPU limitation, that's when you get the most benefit from it. So if you're at 200 frames per second, you may be CPU limited more than GPU limited. The thing is, even in those cases, you may run into a spot where you're GPU limited, and so that benefit can come back when you most need it. So this is a look at uh, Radeon Image Sharpening versus DLSS in Battlefield 5. Um, what we're doing here is we're comparing both image quality and performance. Uh, as you know with DLSS, they sort of, you set it to 4K in the game, but you turn that on and they render to lower resolution, and do some work, edge anti-aliasing, upscaling, and then, then you get the result. What we've done over here is we've set the game to run at 2560 by 1440, and we're upscaling with the GPU upscaler, as you would anytime you run a game in a lower resolution than your display. And then we've done the Radeon image sharpening to sort of draw out the contrast in the images. Does that happen after the upsampling? Uh, sharpening happens and then upsampling afterward. That's actually the correct order. Um, so what you should see is you should see crisper images here 
than here because I think we're probably rendering it uh, Chris, uh, uh, like maybe a, a higher resolution or a similar resolution, plus we're sharpening. Um, you should see not, lots of nice detail, but at the same time we have less performance overhead. And DLSS has its own performance overhead that's pretty substantial. In this case though, they've now limited Battlefield 5, so you have to have RTX on as well. And so there's even more performance hit, right? So you get from 40 frames per second to 93 frames per second. Um, but I think that you'll see, in terms of image quality, this is probably a nicer option. And in terms of performance, I don't think there's any question. So here we are now, we're running the RTX uh, 2060 in Far Cry 5, I think it is, versus the RX 5700. This is at 1440p high settings. So we're going to quickly go over now to the results when this benchmark's finished and see how they compare. But I'm also going to quickly change it down to 1080p and see how those results uh, scale so we can see the difference between 1080p and 1440p scaling quickly for you guys on these two GPUs. Brother, what do you think of the uh, 5700 XT? 5700 XT has some uh, promising, assuming AMD's presentation is accurate, some promising reduction in power requirement. I'm a little saddened at the loss of some of the overclocking features for extreme overclocking. I'll talk about that more later, but um, VBIOS is locked. Uh, waiting for information on the power stages, but the GPU itself sounds like it should be should be promising compared to Vega especially because you're looking at 40 CUs versus uh, 64 and they saw a performance increase and a power reduction. So I'd say that's that's looking promising. So we're now with Wendell and what do you think of the 5700 XT? Okay, neat. If they're going in a different direction, the architecture looks interesting. I have to play with one. I don't know. It's interesting how uh, much emphasis they put on how different it is from GCN. Like, they went out of their way to make sure that we understood that this is something that a lot of work has gone into, and it's not GCN. And uh, are you excited for the features or for the performance? I, it, it looks like it's going to be, well, I mean, everything depends on pricing, which we don't know. So it looks like it's a cool product, but everything depends on pricing in terms of like, Will they sell a million or 10 million? And uh, last question, are you going to pre-order? I probably will just to test it. But you, but you shouldn't. Don't pre-order. Are you going to pre-order the 5700 XT? No. <laughs> what do you think of the 5700 XT? I think so far we've got to see reviews, but it's looking really good. It's going to, some people are going to be not, you know, 2080 Ti, but what's going to make it is price. Performance, I think, is pretty damn good. Looking like a 27 competitor, 2060. They're pitching it there. If that all matches up and the price is right, and PCIe 4 with Ryzen, it's like a whole package. It's a whole package, and um, you know, it's it, it's a good. It's looking good. I mean, I, I overall, it's like, what can you say? You can't you can't be disappointed Biggest unless it's too expensive. Are you pre-ordered? You never pre-order until you see reviews. You always have to wait for reviews. But you know, it's I, I'm pleasantly I'm I'm confident. I mean, the the power looks pretty pretty good. You know, you always kind of wish you were the most badass card in the world. But hey, you, realistically, these are the parts that people buy. So good place to be. Yeah, I think so. So we'll see. All right. And uh, check out PC World, guys. Oh yeah, thanks. PCWorld.com. So this is something we saw at Computex with the PCIe Gen 4, and that's essentially just the bandwidth a lot higher. So in this case, they're doing a 8K ProRes demo, and it essentially won't stutter 
on the PCIe Gen 4 bus, but when you put it on the PCIe Gen 3, because it's just such a huge resolution, it will then stutter on PCIe Gen 3. Obviously having more bandwidth on PCIe Gen 4 is always a good thing if you're an 8K video editor. So now we're onto the next demo, and this one is the Fidelity FX filter. And what this essentially does is, this is a 1440p monitor, and it'll grab an image at 1080p, and then upscale it to 1440p, but also in the process apply sharpening. So you won't get the natural 1440p image, but you will get better than standard 1080p upscaling, but also getting the performance and frame rates of 1080p. Now, I am trying this demo out, and it, of course, doesn't look as good as 1440p, but it doesn't look bad either. So it is a good compromise if, for instance, a new game comes out and you don't want to play it at a particular FPS setting and you want to get more frames out of your GPU, then you can do that. But of course, take a little bit of a quality hit, but not much of a quality hit as opposed to jumping up to 1440p, if that makes any sense. And there's the Radeon 5700 XT in this actual system right now, powering this. So here's the next technology that AMD has with the Navi GPUs, and it's called DSC, or Display Stream Compression. And now I'm gonna move over to Michael, who's gonna explain this technology a little bit better. Yeah, so um, the monitor that we have uh, on the left here uh, is uh, running chroma subsampling in order to achieve 120 hertz. Um, basically, um, DisplayPort doesn't handle anything over about 95 hertz um, without going into chroma subsampling, which basically uh, preserves uh, luminance, but it, it messes up the color. Um, so with display stream compression, DSC, which is what we have on the right, we can go up to 144 hertz and we can still maintain good color uh, quality. And that's what we're demonstrating here is basically that now with the new uh, Navi board, we support uh, display stream compression. So it's able to handle uh, up to 144 hertz or indeed even higher and still have it be supporting 10 bit color all, all the while. Whereas on the left here, we've got, you know, 8 bit color essentially, you know, as it's going into chroma subsampling. And this is exclusive to the 5700 XT? And the 5700 well, it's exclusive to the new Navi. Uh, for, for us, it is for, you know, for Ryzen or excuse me, for uh, Radeon. And there it all is with the RX 5700 and the XT. Now the card itself, got to look at that, and it felt like it was pretty good quality. I mean, the reference blower design is there, but I must say in the last few years, a lot of companies have been making the reference design coolers a lot quieter. And in this case, the fan does look a little bit bigger than usual. So you can expect this thing to be pretty quiet. And I saw it in the test rigs, and they, even though they were prototype models, they were looking pretty good, but of course, we've got to wait on the pricing with these cards, that is everything. And as I said before, when we were doing some of those interviews, we we're making jokes about pre-ordering, but basically guys, don't pre-order until these things are on our test bed and we can give you guys a proper analysis on how well they perform, not just in price performance, but the overall experience as well. Some other important details with the 5700 too, and also the XT is that there won't be on day one initially custom AIB partner board cards. They will have the reference design out, but they won't have those custom models until a little bit later. And as Gamers Nexus said before in the interviews, the VBIOS is locked and how this is going to affect overclocking, especially on the cheaper variant, the 5700, we don't know yet until we're actually able to test these things. I hope it doesn't limit overclocking too much, especially on that cheaper variant where a lot of people are going to want to get that simply for value for money play. And one more thing they did talk about was ray tracing as well. They're gonna have a hardware-based ray tracing acceleration. But when I heard that, and then I heard that coupled with three years, I sort of kind of shut off. So it's sort of like, seems like it's more of a pipeline thing at the moment that's going to come later. So I wouldn't really be buying the 5700 or the XT for its ray tracing abilities just quite yet. Though it is good to see that AMD is not just focusing on CPUs, which I will have a video coming out a little bit later about the whole CPU thing, especially the 16 core, that being announced. And uh, it's coming in two months after the 12 core and all the rest of the SKUs that are up there. So that's a little bit interesting. I think no one expected a two month delay. I was looking at more of a six month delay. But of course, with rumors and leaks, nothing's ever certain until it's out of the horse's mouth. But with that said, we still got NVIDIA and they're gonna go hard with their announcement at E3. I mean, I think after AMD stole the show at Computex, 
I think it's going to be a case of at E3 Jensen versus Lisa Su. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see. But one thing, regardless of all this, and that is competition, as we've always said around here at Tech yes City, is a good thing. And at the end of the day, we, the consumers, end up winning when competition is abound. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button for us. Also, let us know in the comments section below. Are you looking forward to the Navi GPUs or are you looking forward to more the CPUs from AMD? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And let us know what you think of the anti-lag thing. I actually thought it was pretty cool. Gamers could definitely use more responsiveness in games. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh,